Hi everyone. So I want to talk about one of the more difficult things that comes up in waves. And so it's snapshot and history graphs. And I just want to try to explain the difference between them using this, uh, this little graphic here. So what we have is a, a wave traveling sideways and we have this little red dot. The first kind of graph that we want to talk about is called a snapshot graph. So it's a snapshot graph is literally a picture of this graph at a single moment in time. And so as it's moving to the side, you just go click and take a picture and what it looks like is the graph. So let's see what that, that looks like. So the wave moves to the side and at t equals 27 seconds in this uh, simulation, a picture of that graph is taken and it's just exactly what it looks like with its position and everything at that time. The history graph is a little more confusing. So the history graph is what is happening at a single point over time. So the single point we're going to be considering is this red dot. And we're going to look at what happens to this red dot as the wave moves through the medium. So say this is just a red dot on a, on a string or it's a dock in an ocean or something like that on the water. So. When the wave comes through, the dot first goes up and then down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's what gets plotted, right? The behavior of the dot moving up and down versus what the wave looks like at some instant in time. So here's both of them together. So as the wave moves to the side, the history graph tracks what's happening with that red dot going up and down. And then at one of those instances time, t equals 24 seconds or 27 seconds, it gets a picture taken of it, right? And you see the graphs are actually the opposite of each other and you know they have different axes. One is position, one is time. So this is the real difference between snapshot and history graphs. One of the hardest things to do is given a history graph is to think of what the snapshot graph looks like. And a lot of this plotting these graphs has to do with being able to think of a pulse or some waveform and how it moves through space and then plot how it moves through space. So what I've done here is I have two plots. I have a red dot on the top, which is a very specific position, x equals two centimeters. So on the bottom, I have the history graph plotted. And I'm gonna show uh, step by step as we move through how when this pulse moves through that red dot, we get the graph on the bottom. So as I advance forward in time, I'm advancing a half second at a time. So that's why the red dot on the bottom is moving half second at a time. I go through and this is the instant when my wave on the top is about to hit the position x equals two centimeters. And as I go forward in time, I see that, oh, on the bottom, my dot has gone up in correspondence to the wave on the string on the top moving up. And as the wave pulse moves through that position, x equals two centimeters, I can plot the amplitudes of the pulse. So let's show that one more time. So a lot of being able to do this is being able to think of what the pulse looks like as a snapshot graph and then plot what actually happens at a single position. Um, so yeah, take a look at this a bunch and I think you just have to think hard about it and stare at it for a long time, truthfully. Thanks.